This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. The views expressed by guests on this program do not necessarily represent the views of the host or owners of the Doggy Diva Show and do not necessarily constitute endorsement of products. Medical information discussed by guests on this program are those of the guests and is only for informational purposes and should not replace medical advice by your local veterinarian professional. Hi, this is Susan Marie from the Doggy Diva Show. This week, pet toxins in your garage and shed, suffocation dangers for your pets, and doing your part to support shelter and rescues. That's what's on our show this week. Let's get to it. Hey, did you hear that? What is that? It's the bark heard round the world. The Doggy Diva Show. Here's Susan Marie. Hi, welcome to the Doggy Diva Show, the show for animal lovers. I'm your host, Susan Marie, and as always, I'm joined by my canine co-hosts, the Doggy Divas themselves, Francesca, Coco, and our newest little diva, Miss Olive. Miss Olive is the cute little Italian greyhound rescue in the picture with the microphone. Thank you for joining us today as we bring the experts in the pet and animal world right to you. So go grab a cup of coffee and your pet's favorite treat, and we'll be back in just a moment. Hey, cat people. Litter box smells always on your mind. Think about your cat, not the box, with World's Best Cat Litter, the litter that delivers big odor control in a tiny package. World's Best Cat Litter harnesses the concentrated power of corn to trap odors deep inside the litter. Ready to knock out smells and use less litter? Find World's Best Cat Litter at Target, Walmart, and in your local grocery and pet stores. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back, everyone. I'm here with Monica Layton from Professional Pet Sitting. Now, Monica, there's something, you know, with the bad weather, a lot of people are utilizing their garages more. And sometimes in the southern, somewhere in the southern states, people are using things to try to get their yards all cleaned up, getting ready for the spring. But I don't think that some people are aware that there are really severe toxins for our pets in our garages and in our sheds. We kind of just lock them up and think that they're away, but sometimes we leave them open because we're working in them. So can you give us some information on how to prevent that? Absolutely. Um, Pet Poison Helpline gets so many calls on this that they actually came out with a really great article and they did the top seven garage and shed toxins. The main thing in awareness is knowing which items are toxic to our pets, knowing where to go when you have the problem. And, you know, really, once you know what items are big issues, you know, making sure they're raised, they're off the floor, they're put up on shelves. So that way the pets do not have access to these items. So starting out with a couple things for the car, um, antifreeze. Antifreeze is a big one. It's sweet. It's odorless. It really attracts our pets. However, it can be, you know, highly lethal. Um, generally, they see this a lot with cats. Um, cats, for some reason, really, really like the antifreeze. Not that dogs do not. They do as well. But you'll have a lot of indoor-outdoor cats, you know, things of that nature. And they get a lot of calls each year with um, cat intoxication from antifreeze. So keeping them near, you know, away from any kind of antifreeze, things of that nature, really important. Also cleaning it up if you're working on a car, things of that nature, and you're using antifreeze or putting it into your vehicle, making sure that there's none left over on the cement, making sure it's scrubbed and cleaned really well. Another thing is brake fluid. Um, brake fluid is similar to the ethylene glycol, which is an antifreeze, um, It has a little bit of a wider safety margin, but it does not give you the positive ethylene glycol urine test that antifreeze does when you bring the pet in and have issues. So one of the things that it can cause is really bad kidney failure. Really important that just like antifreeze, you keep all brake fluid away from your pets. Um, Another thing for your vehicle is windshield washer fluid. It's something that you wouldn't think was 
as much of an issue. Um, but it actually has something called methanol in there, um, which is a volatile alcohol. And it's usually colorless, um, clear. It's kind of sweet smelling to them. Um, but it's absorbed very quickly into the stomach and can cause some serious GI and also central nervous system issues. So besides, you know, vomiting and abdominal pain, they can actually get really lethargic. They can get ataxia. They can become depressed. Um, they can have signs of um, hyperglycemia, um, tremors, seizures, difficulty breathing. So you can have some really big side effects when it comes to something as simple as windshield, wa windshield washer fluid. And then when you get to things in your shadow garage that could be maybe on a shelf, um, petroleum distillates is a, a material that can be found in paint thinners, um, kerosene, mineral spirits, gasoline, propane, um, butane, motor oil, um, some car lubricants, certain paints, um, citronella torch fluids for like our citronella candles, things of that, it's, um, things of that, you know, area. They're extremely irritating to the skin. Um, they have a high risk of inflammation and also causing ulcers um, in the pets. And of course, if your pet gets into any of these items, they always say, you know, never induce vomiting on these certain items. Get them to a vet immediately um, for treatment, but be very cautious about any of those items in your, you know, garage or shed area. Next, we get into our glues and adhesives, um, you know, very commonly found, you know, our super glues, even some of our rodent traps with the glues can be very harmful to, you know, wildlife and, um, you know, your own pets that, you know, may come into a garage when it gets cold, even if you have, you know, stray or feral cats that, you know, maybe looking for a heat source, you know, getting into the garage and getting into a glue trap or getting into any kind of adhesive can really, really do some damage to the fur and the skin. Um, so be very cautious with adhesives. Um, of course, you know, when we talk about, you know, the garage and sheds and, you know, as we talked about the bait traps, things of that nature, you're also looking into your rodenticides and your insecticides. Um, this is a more, you know, commonly known, um, you know, poison for our pet, but they have some very extreme effects, um, brain swelling, internal bleeding, um, kidney disease, really, really high side effects of being very cautious on any, you know, rodent traps or insecticides, even ant baits. Um, it can be the most, you know, kind of benign bug killer, but it can have some very serious effects on our pets. And then number seven is our fertilizers. Something that most of us who garden, I mean, it, we're here in Florida, great weather, we have lots of gardeners, but no matter where you are, um, fertilizer is a very common thing to find in a shed or in a garage. Um, but you have to be extremely cautious with pets and fertilizer. Iron is a very big ingredient in fertilizers and heavy metal toxicity in our pets can be a very big issue. And the other thing on a smaller level is a lot of fertilizers are actually made with, you know, roundworm larvae, things of that to, you know, get those worms into the soil and producing it and keeping, you know, certain things away and you know, we'll have clients all the time that they'll have pets come in and they're like, I don't know how they're getting these parasites. And it can be such as simple as, you know, a cat who digs into a potted plant at home or your dog that likes to dig in the flower beds. Um, it's a great place for, you know, worms of different stages to, you know, get in contact with your pet. So besides, you know, the iron and some of the bigger issues, you know, constant kind of parasite, you know, ingestation is a huge one with that as well. So if you're aware of these ingredients, then please keep them on higher shelves, keep them out of the way, so that way your pets can stay safe. Wow, that's such great information. And, you know, like we're, like I said, we may be using our garages more, we may be using the sheds more, keep the doors shut if you, you're not there. And as you said, elevate everything, keep it up because, you know, um, not only for our personal pets, but other pets in the neighborhood or, or an animal just seeking heat could be some form of wildlife. So those are great tips. 
I learned a lot on that one. So I thank you very much, Monica. Have a great week. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful week. Hi, Doggy Diva Show listeners. Susan Marie here to take just a half a minute to let you know how much we appreciate your being with us every week to hear great dog tips you can use with your pet, some great stories about rescues, fostering, and some heartwarming stories about second chances for pets who are now in loving forever homes. Be sure to go to our website, thedoggydiva.com, to see pictures of Miss Olive and other dogs we talk about on the show and get to know us a little better. That's thedoggydiva.com, D-O-G-G-Y. We appreciate your feedback, too. Okay, let's get back to the show. Coming up, concerned about your pet suffocating? Up next, what you need to know. Does your dog itch, scratch, stink, or shed like crazy? Come to Dynavite for help. Order a 90-day supply of Dynavite. Dynavite for life. Pick up two tubes of Doggo Suds. Get the third tube free. Peppermint, tea tree, lavender, Doggo Sud shampoo. Made with all-natural coconut, jojoba, aloe. Great for healthy skin and soft, shiny coats. But no itchy, harsh chemicals. Lather up, rinse away. Try Doggo Suds. Buy two, get one free. At Dynavite.com. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E.com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back, everyone, to the Doggy Diva Show. Before the holidays, we had a very important health tip from Monica Layton, which was to save our pets' lives from suffocation. And today, we actually have the founder of Prevent Pet Suffocation, and it's a nonprofit organization created to spread awareness and educate the public on suffocation risks that our pets face from chip bags and other food packaging. And I want to welcome today Bonnie Harlan. How are you, Barney? Hi, Susan. I'm great. Thank you. Thanks for having me on, too. Oh, it's our pleasure. Now, can you please tell the listeners a little bit about yourself and about what your inspiration was in founding the Prevention of Pet Suffocation? Um, Sure, of course. So six years ago, uh, Christmas 2011, I came home from doing some, you know, holiday errands. And when I went into the side door of my kitchen, my dog, Blue, was not there to greet me at the door, which was, you know, pretty unusual. So I thought maybe he was hiding in another room or something, but I noticed a little bag of trash tumped over in the kitchen. So I thought that was odd. And then I noticed some holiday decorations um, pushed over as well. So I started walking through the house looking for him. You know, I just couldn't find him anywhere. So I circled the house two or three times and I finally found him upstairs in my game room. and what I saw was just such a total shock because he was just laying there lifeless with a Cheetos chip bag over his head. Hmm. And just in that second, I, I just realized, oh my God, he, he, he must have suffocated in this chip bag. So I ran to him, took the bag off. You know, he was still warm. I tried, I called my vet immediately. He walked me through CPR. Um, it was not successful. And it was devastating to me. And that was really the start of my inspiration because I was so angry and upset and shocked that this had happened to my my dog. I had just seen him a few minutes earlier, and I just wasn't prepared for it. And I wasn't prepared for the struggle that he went through as well as he suffocated in this chip bag. And I'm so sorry of your loss, and it's... And I think that what you just explained was how simple and how quickly and how unexpectedly this can happen um, to to any of our pets. Can you tell us about your pet prevention suffocation? You actually have a nonprofit organization. Tell you, can you tell us about that? I do. Um, so that was in December of 2011. So in January, I started Prevent Pet Suffocation, which at the time was basically an awareness campaign, which it still is, but it started out as an awareness campaign, a Facebook page, you know, Twitter, Instagram, to and a website to spread awareness. So 
more people would know that this was an issue because I realized that it, it happened. Mine was not a fluke accident. It was definitely happening out there. So the last six years, it's just been growing and growing. And last year, you know, I officially became a nonprofit. So, it's, you know, it's exciting because it's an international campaign at this point, and we are getting the word out. And the more people know, the more dogs' lives we can save. And that's what's so important, and that's why I felt it was important to have you on the show today to do that. And actually, you're going to be featured in the upcoming issue of Suncoast Pet Magazine. And uh, it's and Candace, I know, is going to be posting the uh, article. So, I, 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 Candace, I just want you to talk about this because obviously you're very passionate about this also. Um, yeah, I was... <laughs> One of the people, and I know, Bonnie, you've said that 99.9% of all people are totally unaware that this could happen to their animals. Um, I happened to find, and it was probably one of your posts, I guess, at one point, a story online, probably back in December, about a dog that had suffocated in a chip bag. And I thought, my goodness, how could this be happening? And how come we don't know about this? And interestingly enough, when you did the um, interview with Monica, who works with Dr. Reinhardt at Jacaranda Animal Hospital, the vets don't know about it. So this is why I I did a little background research and found you and figured this was such an important topic that, because I am guilty beyond belief of up till the time I spoke to you and saw this post and read all your interesting information on the website, chip bags went right in the garbage. I never cut them up. I left, I would fall asleep with them on the you know, on the uh, cocktail table that my dogs easily could have reached them. And so I just felt that this is something that we have to share with our audience, Susan, who's got an international audience, or at least a national audience at this point, and me regionally here and you internationally, with the good work that you're doing, we have to make people aware of this because, God, I just, I can't imagine the horror that you went through. And I I just, I, I think it's... What you've well, done. Thank you. Yeah. Um, well, as you mentioned, you know, the vets don't know about it, and, and that's actually true. Um, when I did call my vet and he was walking me through CPR, he actually came right over to my house, which is kind of unheard of uh, in Houston. And when he came over, he said to me, you know, I could have warned you about a hundred things, but a chip bag wouldn't have been one of them. Hmm. And so he had just never heard of it. And so that is kind of part of this mission. You know, we want to educate the vets and the rescue groups and the pet hospitals and the pet sitters and your family and your friends because everybody needs to know that comes into contact with animals, which is almost everybody that I know, really. So, yeah, it's just it's very important. And, you know, I had chip bags laying around, too, back, back then. Mm-hmm. None of us knew. And that is the most common refrain I hear from a devastated pet owner. You know, I had no idea this was a problem if only I had known. And so then, you know, we've implemented different things you can do to, you know, chest proof your home basically against, you know, pet suffocation. Well, Bonnie, what advice do you have? To prevent this tragedy from happening, and and I and I would b- imagine that it's not only for pets, but it's for all animals. Obviously, the you know the domestic pets are you know kind of first and foremost in people's minds. But it you're right; it isn't just those because we have to take measures to pr- protect those animals, cats and dogs, but also the stray dogs that wander, the stray cats. You know, they get into landfills. They're in parks. They're on beaches. There's wildlife. I mean, I've seen many a video or a photo of a squirrel, a deer, um, a skunk, anything with a a back over its head. Uh, There was a recent video I saw of a kangaroo. Um, You know, these were animals were saved, luckily, but not everyone is so lucky. Bonnie, can you can you explain exactly what happens? Why um, why this is an issue? Because people might not understand what the process is that's going on with these these mylar type bags okay they're made of this material to keep snacks fresher and it's a clear mylar material that's kind of laminated with aluminum and it creates um 
a very strong, you know, type of bag. So the, the snack stays, stay fresher and they don't rip as easily and so forth. So the thicker the mylar, the stronger the bag. So when the pet puts his head into a bag, it kind of creates this vacuum-like seal around his neck. And then as he tries to breathe, the bag starts to tighten. Well, it cuts off the oxygen, right? So then the dog can't remove the bag from his head. And at this point, he can't see either. So they start to panic, and they run around, typically. And as my dog did, he ran around downstairs, went upstairs, went around the game room, knocking over lamps and everything else before he finally succumbed to it. So it's a very, you know, horrific death, actually. I mean, if you can just imagine that. It, it, so it sounds that's horrible. And all animals right. are very curious about the, what's in the bag because they all want those little crumbs and snacks. So having the bag out there and then having your pet put there, I mean, it can happen so fast. I mean, you could even be in the house and it could happen. Right. It does. And I've heard several stories from people. They, they're watching TV. Their dog gets a bag. They go into another room. They find their dog in the next room. They've come out of a shower. They found their dead, their dog dead. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it does. You don't have to be gone uh, it, for it to happen. So that's why you just really have to be vigilant all the time. And every time I leave my house, I look around for anything. Um, even though I do crate my dog when I leave, I'm still paranoid in case somebody comes home and, I, and it's not me and lets them out. You know, you just have to always be aware of what's going on. And so some of the main things you can do are, you know, store your snacks, your chips, your snacks, your popcorn into, you know, plastic containers. Keep them high up and away from your pet. Keep all chips, snack bags, tie up away from your pet. You need to care or cut up all the bags, you know, once you're done with them. And I don't care if it's, you know, one scissor cut or two or three, as long as this bag is cut up and can't hurt some other animal in a landfill or a trash bag. Um, keep your trash can uh, tightly fastened. Keep them, you know, even behind a locked cabinet. Always keep your kitchen pantry door closed. And you really want to educate your your children and your uh, children's friends that come over to play, your pet sitters, uh, your housekeepers, anyone that's going to kind of be in your house on a regular basis. And then tell your friends and family about it because uh, that's really kind of our best defense against pet suffocation is spreading the awareness. Well, and it's and it's interesting because you brought up something that, you know, yes, it, you let's say we throw it out, we put it in the trash, we throw everything right outside in our own trash. It goes to a landfill or there are animals that unfortunately can go through trash and there's a number of probably, um, and I'm thinking about raccoons or even like feral cats or something. I mean, there's something that affects every animal by doing this, by just the precautionary measure of like cutting up, you could just like open it up, cut it. And then just, it, it could be like four cuts of a, a scissor just to, um, just to, you know, get it so that it's not a danger. Not only is it not a danger in your house, but it could be like a danger that you don't even know it could happen months from then. And I don't think people even think of that. I know I didn't until it was brought to my attention, uh, by Candace about you and what you're doing. Um, and this is before the holidays. That's why we did our show for the holidays so that people would understand at a, at a gathering, please make sure you serve in open bowls. Don't leave, you know, chip bags or, or any, uh, plastic bag out for your, you know, at your pet could just get into it. And I mean, and there are counter surfers that can pull them down. So if you think you have them up high enough, not all the time. I literally just saw a video today where this cute little dog was climbing on a chair, on a table, leaped to the kitchen counter. That was a dog. Mm -hmm. um, so, you, you know, you just don't know. Um, and, you know, it's chip bags, it's snack bags, but it's also your dog food and your cat food bags. Mm -hmm. The treat bags and, and all of that for your animals are just as big a risk, as well as cereal bags. Um, we all have, you know, boxes of cereal, and they, too, come in that shiny Mylar packaging. As pet parents, pet lovers, you know, the people who listen to the show are obviously listening to get more information about, you know, pets and how to enhance their pets' lives and the other 
and other pets' lives and other animals' lives. How do you, re- what could we do to help get this word out and to help bring this issue? Obviously, it needs to be brought to the forefront. I don't think people even understand um, how widespread it is, and it's not something that gets a lot of press. So I think that it's very important that people are made aware of it, but what could we do to get it out there? And what could we do to help to decrease the opportunity of this happening in our own home or in, uh, you know, a loved one's home? Well, one of the main things is to go to my website, preventpetsuffocation.com. It's full of information on A, how this happens, B, what you can do to prevent it. There are also a link called infographics. They can print, uh, they can click on, print off any of the infographics and they can take them to their their vets, they can put them in their house, they can put them in uh, rescue groups, you know, you can pass them around, you can share them on social media, uh, that's that's one way. Also, on Facebook, we are Prevent Pet Suffocation on Facebook, I have, a, you know, amazingly 16,000 supporters you know, and followers mm-hmm. on there. They spread the word all the time by sharing these posts, so... A person can do that too. It's pretty easy to share a post. The more people see it, the more they learn about it. I'm also on Instagram. I'm also on Twitter. So there are all kinds of ways to, you know, help do that and really just keep talking about it. Well, have you spoken to any uh, organizations in, in maybe ways that they could revamp their packaging? Yes, we've actually reached out to a few. We've had um, one or two smaller organizations um, were willing to change, like, uh, some of their packaging. Uh, Obviously, I I do have a petition out to Frito-Lay to add warning labels to their CHIP Act. That petition, gosh, it's probably been four years. It's still live because the more signatures we get, um, you know. Now, is that that on your website? It is on the website. It's on the homepage. You can click down at the bottom, click on the petition and sign it, which is wonderful. Uh, Because it's kind of a two-pronged approach. We want to do awareness, but we also want to, you know, add these warning labels to the chip bags. And that's very important because it might be something that someone wouldn't even think of. And if they do read the warning label, they will, they'll they'll be able to dispose of the bag correctly so that their pet, you know, it doesn't compromise their pet. One of the things I I know Candace is doing an article as myself, you know, Candace is very uh, passionate about this as you are. And I just wanted, Candace, can you just touch a little bit on the article and how people are going to be able to read this? Because you're going to have this article online, correct? Yeah. Well, right now the article is online um, at suncoastpet.com. And when I first uh, interviewed Bonnie a couple of weeks ago, we had talked about the fact that I felt that this was such important news for our uh, animal community here that I wanted, for the first time ever, um, the article was written for the March-April issue, but it's online before March-April issue is out because it's too important to hold for another few weeks. So that's why I wanted to get it posted. Um, basically, it's we're covering most of the information that we've discussed here today in the article with, you know, Bonnie's personal story and her loss with her dog, Blue, and touching on all the important facts, what people can do to prevent this in their own homes. Also mentioned information about, you know, um, chip bags ending up on beaches or um, in parks or in landfills where other animals that, you know, are not pets, but are, you know, part of our community anyway, so that we can protect them as well. Um, and also, I can use some of those in- infographics, if I have your permission, if I ever need to fill a hole in the magazine, Bonnie, I'll, <laughs> I'll yeah. put in something there, yeah, definitely. so that we can keep this as part of, you know, Suncoast Pets mission to help pet owners. And I know Susan's going to bring it up again, because it's just so important You know, like I said, when I saw that first post that day, I nearly fell off my chair. I was so shocked that something like that could happen. And the fact that despite your efforts, you know, people still don't know. It's like, are they not paying attention or I'm not sure, but I I admire you for for taking this terrible tragedy that you faced and turning it into something positive for the rest of us so that hopefully that we don't have to ever suffer through something like this with our own pets. 
Thank you. And Bonnie, you know, let's give out the information. Uh, your Facebook is Prevent Pet Suffocation and your website is PreventPetSuffocation.com. And you right. also, and that's also your Instagram and your Twitter is For You Blue 2. Exactly. Yeah. Uh-huh. And that's the number four, the word you, and it's the word blue and the number two, so that you could follow Bonnie on Twitter. I mean, these are really, really important things that can happen so fast. You know, years ago, I some I was became passionate about something, and I found out that the power of the internet and the power of the media is just overwhelming because people want to support and people want to get the word out, and... um some changes were made based on that. So we are behind you. Candace and I are behind you a thousand percent on this. And I just hope that the listeners um, hop on your web page and your Facebook page and help to get the word out and uh, sign the petition. And also look for Candace's article that look for the article online too, because it'll, it'll help to bring a lot of light also at suncoastpet.com. So, Bonnie, I thank you very much. I'm so sorry for the loss of Blue, but um, in the long run, I think Blue is saving many, 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 many lives. Uh, So I thank you for what you're doing. I know it takes a lot of dedication and time and um, and that you put your whole heart into this. And it's it's something that really we all need to be aware of, whether it's for our own pets or for the animals that are outside that it could impact just solely by accident. So thank you again, and uh, it's been a pleasure talking to you. And I think we're going to have you back on the show because I think this is something we need to keep out in the forefront. No, I appreciate it, and I would love to be back on the show anytime. I'm always interested in spreading, you know, awareness. And Susan, thank you, and Candace, awesome work, and uh, I appreciate it, and I look forward to talking again. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. All right. Take care. Take care. We'll be back in just a moment. Coming up, doing your part to support shelters and rescues. Stay with us. Molly, here's your dinner. (coughs) Zeus, that's not your food. Don't let that happen to your precious cat. Elevate your cat's eating experience with the Cat Tree Tray. The Cat Tree Tray keeps your cat's food off the floor and conveniently located on the cat tree. It's the perfect way to eat. It's a beautiful wrought iron tray that easily attaches to your cat tree and keeps dogs and other critters out of your cat's dish. A must for multi-pet households. There's a 6-inch tray for large bowls and a 4-inch tray for smaller bowls. Purchase your cat tree tray today. Go right now to CatTreeTray.com. That's CatTreeTray.com. C-A-T-T-R-E-E-T-R-A-Y.com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back to the Doggy Diva Show, everyone. Fundraising for canine and feline events are so important for shelter pets and rescue pets nationwide. And we have with us today Candace Botha. She's the publisher and founder of Suncoast Pet Magazine, who is actively involved with a few of them on the Suncoast here. So welcome, Candace. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Our pleasure. Now, um, we have a couple coming up. I mean, there's a number of them out there, but I know that you're involved with uh, with these. Why don't we start talking about the one that's coming up um, on March 3rd. It is the Humane Society of Manatee County's Pause in Motion Walkathon, which is always a big event. I mean, there's a lot of people. It is a, a big event. And this year, I know it's going to be even better than ever because it's at a brand new location. Um, it's back, I think, on the Riverwalk at a restaurant. Oh, and I love that restaurant. Caddy's at the Point, mm-hmm. it's called. And this is a huge thing because there's going to be all kinds of wonderful foods and and everything that's going to be available after the walk. So I'm encouraging everybody to get involved this year. Obviously, we always want to support Humane Society of Manatee County, but this is a, going to be an extra special event. It's actually the 12th annual Pause in Motion Walkathon. 
I think it's their biggest fundraiser of the year. You can sign up to participate in the event as a walker. You can have a team and get pledges and raise money that way. One of the things I find most exciting for pet owners is that if you're the team that wins the most amount of money, your pet could become the spokes pet for next year's event. I love that. I know. So this year they had Ollie, a beautiful dog, looks like an Australian shepherd. I know, it's perhaps. gorgeous. Yeah. Um, beautiful dog that was um, the spokes, spokes pet taken by, that photo was taken by Dog Street Photography. Back to the event. Um, it is on the Riverwalk in Bradenton, and Caddy's at the point at 801 Riverside Drive East is going to be both the start point and the end site for the event. You can register, like I said, as a team and collect pledges. There's a fee of $25 to register, and you get an event T-shirt and a goodie bag. And then after the event, there's going to be different contests, games, prizes. Um, they're expanding the number of vendors this year. It's almost going to be like a little vendor uh, village there. And there's going to be live music. So it really sounds like it's going to be an awesome, fun event that's raising money for Humane Society of Manatee County. I have a great appreciation for the work that's being done there. Rick Yoakum, who's the executive director, has made so many changes up there in the past couple of years since he's been there. And um, this, the event, I'm sure this year is going to be the best ever. We had Rick on last year to promote the uh, Humane Society of Manatee County's uh, uh, Pause in Motion, the Walkathon. He actually called us like from the event. It was like really kicking. There was a lot going on, a lot of fun. As Candace said, there's vendors, there's prizes, there's music, there's food, there's goodie bags. There's just so much going on. And the best part of it is all of it benefits the Humane Society of Manatee County, who's made such a tremendous impact, Rick and his team. Yes. Um, with the animals. Yes. So. And actually, it's benefiting the second chance adoption shelter that they oh, have great. up there for all the animals that they're adopting out. But um, I think we've talked about this in the past, and I know um, it's been featured in Suncoast Pet with their low cost care clinic that they have up there, how many animals that they're treating and um, affordably for people who are on tight budgets and, you know, need to get their animals health care. Um, it's a beautiful clinic. Um, and I would strongly recommend uh, checking them out for, you know, anything from vaccinations to any kind of illnesses that your pets might have. It's truly one of the most affordable places that I've seen in our area that offers exceptional care with wonderful veterinarians and staff there. And so. also, I just wanted to get out there the date of the event, which is March 3rd. Registration starts at 9. I believe the event itself starts at 10. Again, it's located at Caddy's at the Point, which is in Bradenton. And for anyone who wants to know more about this, you can go to www.humane.com manatee.org or candace your magazines online they can read the articles mm -hmm. uh, you can go to suncoastpet.com and go to the magazine and you can read all about this because there's information and you can also see ollie the spokes pet yes yes for 2018 you and can, maybe if you raise the most money your pet could be the spokes pet for 2019 that would be awesome that would be awesome but uh, the restaurant caddies at the point is pr pretty new i think it was established last year 2000 2017. Um, it's a Bradenton's newest and hottest dining and entertainment destinations. And I looked at the menu. I was curious because it's right on the Manatee River. Oh, it's right on the river. Yeah. yeah so it looked like a fun spot to go. And I looked at the menu and I was like, oh my. Yep. It's a fun, it is. It's a fun <laughs> yep. spot. It's it would a, be a fun place to yeah. go for sure. So. Yeah, so it's something that dog lovers and just everybody would like to go there just to hang out mm -hmm. and, uh, and actually be a part of this wonderful event. Because there's really, you could, if you don't have a dog, it's a wonderful place just to get out and support the dogs. Yes. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's like kind of a family day event. And as I said, it's it seemed it, like last year was really a, a really great event. There was a lot going on. And um, so we're looking forward to this year because we think that this is even going to top it. Yes, absolutely, especially being right on the water. It's going to be beautiful up there. Well, speaking of right on the water, mm -hmm. you are on the committee for a very wonderful event. Yes, also on the water. Also <laughs> on the water. There's a theme going on See, here. the perks of living on the <laughs> sun coast. That's right. And, uh, this event is also on the water, and it's actually in a botanical garden, which is, I, I, I just find it to be so wonderful. So, 
Well, why don't you tell us about that? Because this is an event that is also held each year mm -hmm. and it goes to benefit all of the injured homeless cats and kittens at Cat Depot, the ones they rescue every year. So maybe you could tell us a little bit about this. I'm event. happy to, and I'm happy and honored to be serving on the committee for this event this year. Cat Depot kind of took a new direction in their annual fundraiser. Um, it's going to be held on a Friday evening on March 9th, 2018. Um, and they wanted to make it more of a magical night for everybody participating. So the the theme this year is Cat Tales, A Night in the Garden. And like Susan said, it's being held at Maurice Selby Botanical Gardens on Palm Avenue in Sarasota. Um, it's a three-hour event in the evening. So if you get there when it starts, which is 6.30, it'll be just around time for sunset right on the bay in, in Sarasota, which is going to be beautiful. Um, it's going to be both an indoor and outdoor event. There's going to be all kinds of different interactive things that people can do with their um, uh, with their other guests that are coming. Um, things like painting and um, photo ops with their wonderful mascots. Petunia, I think, is one of them. I'm not sure what the other one is called. Um, uh, there'll be cocktails served, uh, handcrafted cocktails served indoors and outdoors. Um, there'll be indoor seating, delectable bites. Um, and it's all prepared by Michael's on East, which you know the food is going to be absolutely delicious. Oh, delicious. There will be live entertainment indoors and outdoors. And if you haven't been to uh, uh, Marie Selby Botanical Gardens, there's uh, the patio area outside is just beautiful with views of the water and lush greenery all around. And there's going to be twinkling lights, mm. and uh, it's going to be beautiful. And one of the things that they're doing this year is they've had some area artists paint wooden cat silhouettes oh. that will be available for purchase. Um, that I think they're probably about two feet high with some of our finest artists like Nancy Colby in the area who have painted them. There'll be bios there. I think they're going to be have, have about 30 of them um, for sale. I think Connie Summers is going to have some note cards that of uh, photos that she's taken along the way for sale there. Um, Cat Depot is renowned for having one of the best silent auctions, and uh, that's what they're planning to do. And I am a, <laughs> I am always an active participant in their silent auction because they have some of the best. They do raffle gifts. They I can't do. even. I don't even know how they do it. They're saying that this is going to be the best silent auction ever. I th one of the prizes that I know is. Um, one of the biggest prizes is ticket uh, tickets for two to fly anywhere in the United States. Wow. That's one of the wow. premium raffles. So that's an exciting thing. And tickets, raffle tickets, you can go to cattepo.org and um, buy your raffle tickets online. I think they're $25 each and five for a hundred. Can you imagine winning two tickets wow. to go any place in the country? That is amazing. I'm not sure if there's, I'm going to have to check into that, but check on Cat Depot's website. They've got lots of information about the, the event. This is going to be totally different than your typical fundraiser that's going to be a sit-down meal and blah, blah, blah. This is like get to know the people that are there that evening, enjoy time at Selby Gardens, enjoy the sunset, be indoors, outdoors, listen to some, I think there's a harpist that's going to be there and a guitarist. It's really an exceptional event that they're planning this year and and um, tickets are $150 per person. Um, I I would say this is going to be one of the highlights of the social season here in Sarasota. I definitely do. And and having been to events and, uh, you know, I, I even went to a wedding, a, mid, a sunset wedding there. The Botanical Gardens, Marie Selby's Botanical Gardens are so, it's like a calming, very beautiful, as Candace said, they have the twinkle lights. And it's all these beautiful, beautiful exotics and mm -hmm. it's just so beautiful and they also sell their own seedlings and plants there mm -hmm. i believe but it's it is such a beautiful place and it's been around a long time this organization cat depot and they are they also have a state-of-the-art yes um a shelter for their cats. it's actually a prototype now mm -hmm. for other cat shelters throughout the country um when they moved and I don't know how many years ago that was, maybe five, six years ago that they had moved over now to their location on 17th Street. You know, the cats are in pods. They have veterinarians. They have a low-cost um, low care clinic there now. 
Um, uh, it's just amazing what, what these shelters are doing to help these animals that, you know, giving them the second chance that they need if, if they're found or if their owners are no longer able to care for them. They're not, there are people actively out there trying to save lives and that's mm -hmm. the most important thing of all. So this, the, both of these events I'm going to be at because I support our local rescue organizations and I encourage everybody else to uh, come out and support them too because they're doing good work day in and day out and it costs money to do the work that they're doing. And they depend on these fundraisers to provide the funds that they need to give medical care to animals and and to take in more animals or to go on different uh, rescue efforts that they've done in different parts of uh, Florida and different parts of the southwest or southeast here on eastern seaborne. So I, I truly would support these organizations as much as possible and enjoy a good night out. Well, for those listeners, since we're heard, I don't know, we're internationally, but since we're, they're heard, but if people want to be a part of it and feel like they could um, contribute just to make a donation, let's, why don't we give out the, can you give out the two websites? Um, Absolutely. Two I know for a fact with uh, Cat Depot, there's a place, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't be there right on their website. I can't be there, but I would like to make a donation. So you can go to catdepot.org, www.catdepot.org, and make a donation there if you would like to support this event. Um, or I would, if you're in a different area of the country, look at what they're doing with this event, and maybe you can um, use it as a prototype for something that you could do, find a, a lovely location and have an evening. You know, Friday night is perfect. It's the end of the week. It's like, you know, let's, let's start off the weekend with a, supporting animals and having handcrafted cocktails and delicious food and music. And my goodness, it's going to be a lot of fun. So catdepot.org, uh, Humane Society, their website is www.humanemanatee.org. I'm sure they also have a donation button on that site. You might want to, again, look at what they're doing if you're in a different part of the country to see how they've organized this walkathon to uh, raise money for the animals in their care. So. And that's what's so good because it benefits the animals that, that both of these organizations get in are homeless. Some of them are homeless. They're injured. They're sick. I mean, they don't all come in ready to go. There's sometimes a lot of care and work that needs to prepare them for their forever home. So, And that's why it's so great to be a part of something like this or any shelter or rescue. You know, if there's a fundraising event or if you just want to donate, however we can help out there. That's what we want to do. Mm -hmm. So please go to these uh, websites or if you have a local shelter or a local rescue that you want to donate to, you're changing lives. You're mm -hmm. impacting lives. And these are two wonderful events that, that we'll be at. And also, I want to thank you, Candice, because you've done such a great job. I know you're on the committee at Cat Depot, and this is a totally different. You know, a lot of times you're in a restaurant or in a hall or mm -hmm. you're in an enclosed area. This is indoor, outdoor. Of course, we have the benefit of being in a beautiful area where you can go outside. We have that mm -hmm. luxury. You know, it's year-round. But... It's something really different and really unique, and I hope that the listeners will get on their website and take a look and see what's going on. The interesting thing about the Cat Depot event, it's the tickets are $150 per person, but they're saying that with every ticket purchased, it's one life life saved mm -hmm. because that's what it basically costs uh, yep. to um, prepare an animal for adoption in terms of, especially with kittens, If and you know, I think we're getting close to kitten season when there's how many kittens that come into Cat Depot between the vaccinations that they get and all the care and the food and the, um, you know, the examinations and mm -hmm. everything else, the test for... And they do the bottle feed yes. for the ones that mm -hmm. need them. I mean, there's just so much that goes on there for the cats. And they are a cat organization, mm -hmm. so... And it's $150 per person, but that's one life you're saving mm -hmm. by participating in the event. So if you are local, please consider coming out to this event. It's going to be unlike anything you've been at before here in Sarasota. And it's supporting an, a wonderful, wonderful organization. And so. both events, the Cat Depot evening, lovely, magical, twinkle light events. Yep. That, that's, that's definitely up Olive's and Mike Alley. <laughs> but again, the Manatee County walk On the river. On the river, out in the fresh air, great restaurant there. Again, everything's right there for you. And it's a family event that you could just go out and have a good time at. And um, so both of these are something that it's 
like an event that you're going to love and you're going to feel good walking away for it. You're mm-hmm. going to know that you made a difference. So, Candice, I want to talk to you about your magazine and uh, Suncoast Pet Magazine and what can, what can we expect in the coming month? Well, let's see. The next issue I'm doing, I, I, I think it trying to do a couple of different things with the new year and it's going to be the 11th anniversary issue i can't believe I it i can't believe it either doing a couple of community spotlights um obviously the um article on pet suffocation is at the top of the list because that's so incredibly important to share that news oh gosh we i think we're going to be focusing we're going to do new and noseworthy which hasn't been done in a while to focus on some of the exciting products in our community that local people are are bringing to the pet community here. And all, as always, the veterinarians provide very important health tips for all of us that we need, um, which make, you know, those are universal for people who are not living here on the Suncoast. You can definitely read the magazine online at suncoastpet.com and find out some interesting things about ways that you can care for your pets and protect your pets. So it's going to be a good issue. I'm uh, a couple of weeks away from finalizing it (laughs) well we're excited because it's olive's birthday that's right Um, yeah so we're gonna have here a little and gosh candace we've been writing for suncoast pet for since 2007 so i've been with you that was the first year inception yeah that was the first year yeah sophia with her her article on diva delights diva Mm -hmm. delights has been around a long time and we love um the fact that we uh that we work with you and have such a fun time being in there and, and so many it reaches so many people in so many ways you know that we love being a part of your magazine and your magazines a true pet lovers magazine so and it's beautiful nice glossy i, I whenever anyone gets it because we have family and friends that that do not live around here that are subscribers which you can subscribe we need to tell them yes. about that and they get it and they can't believe how beautiful it's like a a regular glossy magazine that you Find on the magazine stand. It's so beautiful, and the colors and the shots are beautiful in it. And um, you do a great job. I mean, Thank it's you. wonderful, wonderful, and so much to learn for the pet. Whether you're being a pet parent, a pet lover, or just someone who wants to learn, you could be in the medical field, the veterinary field, because there's so many veterinary articles in there. There's just a lot for the animal person out there. So there's just so much, um, and of course, Miss Olive. With her, Miss Olive's favorite things, always yeah. tries to give some favorite things out there so that people will um, enjoy things as much as she has. So we love to do that. And, and we do our own tips in the Diva Delight. So it's great being a part of the magazine because it reaches so many people. I um, actually spoke with Carol at Marlin's Raw Superfood this week. There was an article in the January, February issue about this fairly new store that's focusing on selling raw and does consultations to transition that's a huge huge trend yes and she said she wrote to me um this weekend she said i i've been meaning to write to you i just wanted to talk to you and uh or mention to you that we're pleasantly surprised by the number of people who have come into the shop and said that they read the article and that they feel that they had a chance to get to know us which made it easier for them to come in that's so nice and that's what you do you do a great introduction to any of the companies or the rescues or anyone who you write for you do it in a nice way so that it's like they're sitting talking to the person right exactly i think that's important when you're covering a topic to get to know the people who are behind the business or the service that's being provided so that it does give you that familiarity it's not like reaching out to a stranger then you know a little bit about them so that it makes it easier to approach them and just because we're local here talking about this right now, your magazine is online. So anyone who wants to become an advertiser out there anywhere. And the advertising is very affordable. It's very affordable yes. and it reaches a lot of people. How can people who are looking to become an advertiser get in touch with you? Because, I mean, you could be anywhere in the country and it's an online magazine as well as a hard copy magazine. So you reach a lot of people. How can they get into what If they the go way? to the website on the homepage, there's actually a form that you could fill out to get some more information about advertising in the magazine. But I've kept the rates very affordable because I'm, I'm a small business that's working with small businesses. I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm trying to make it a way f- for them to promote their business without breaking the bank. Uh, you have to in this economy, you know, you just can't, you know, there are, I know there are some publications that will rake you over the coals for, for, you know, with spending, but I've never been one of them. I don't believe in doing that. I, it's supposed to be a way that you can promote your business and let people know that you exist. And then you support them. But yes. speaking of 
not breaking the bank, you have a line, which I have, I've got your t-shirts, I've got your totes, I've got a pillow, I've got a number of things from your collection. Um, me and my dog USA.com. Me and my dog USA.com. And I just added a whole bunch of things to them, to the line, new t-shirt designs and everything. Tell us a little bit about that because it's just so that the listeners, if they want to go buy a t-shirt or a tote or whether it be for your, the pet lover in your life or for yourself, these are absolutely high quality mm -hmm. and very affordable mm -hmm. and they benefit Yep, ten percent. At this point, ten percent yep. of every sale so is going to. So you're paying it forward yeah. whenever you purchase something. So. And at, as sales grow, then the percentage that I give away will grow as well. So um, it's I came up with this idea that you can personalize a shirt. Um, I have some that have just graphic type, which is really cool and pretty tropical co colors because we are here in Florida. But you could do it for any city throughout the country. Um, I just added um, proud Sarasota or Bradenton or Venice dog mama. Or cat mama. Oh, I might have to get one of those. Yes, now. I think they're. I, sh I have proud owner of a rescued pet in Sarasota, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then there's some with a cute graphic of a girl on the beach and me and my me and my dog or me and my rescue dog loving life in Sarasota. And you can customize it with any city of your choice. Easy to do. Um, it's up online at meandmydogusa.com. I came up with some other cute things. I used a lot of tropical colors on white, and there's also some pretty Caribbean blue shirt that I got mm. for myself that everybody just happened to love that color. So, um, But there's a whole, I think there's like over 600 items on that site. Wow. Now. That is so. like so phenomenal. And just quickly, um, speaking of rescue pets, you do have a book that you wrote, which is for foster parents and yep. uh, for dogs and cats. And you want to quickly touch on that? I have a couple of books. Uh, there was one that's uh, for foster families that you could keep a, it's almost like a scrapbook that you could keep a record of all the foster animals that you've had through the years and with photos and things that you can um, tape in there. And then I also did um, some handbooks for rescue groups that you could fill out for an animal that's going to be adopted with all the medical records, treats that they love, where they like to sleep, um, if they've had training, what vaccinations they've had. It's a little handbook that um, very affordable. I think it's like five ninety five if you order it through the website um, for both dogs and cats that you would actually give to a parent when they adopt a new parent when they adopt their animal that they have an entire record of the the animal that they're adopting. I know I was speaking with um, Iris at a Satchel's Last Resort Sanctuary here in Sarasota, and she said. Oh my goodness, she said, I don't know how many times I'm calling a new, uh, newly adopted family afterwards saying, I forgot to tell you this, I forgot to tell you that. Well, this little handbook, and it is just a small handbook, but I think there's about 20, 30 pages that you can fill out as much information as you want to pass along to a new family. It puts all the information in one spot. So it's very affordable, and I think it's, hopefully it's going to benefit rescue groups. And those are also online at suncoastpet.com. Getting pets, you know, rescue pets, pets from fosters it's always great because you know a lot of times they'll give you like a full sheet of paper and me being a foster mom I did the same thing with other dogs you give them as much as you can information what you did is you laid it out and it's just yeah. a small handbook it's not it's not big but just enough to get so that you know when everything was done or as much as they know about what was done and it's it's something actually a collectible for the pet parent to it get. is it's a it's a momentous thing also and you and can put pictures in there as well yes um some of it you have to fill things out but some of it's very easy check marks you can check mark things like the dog's afraid of strangers or might be a little bit nervous around strangers mm -hmm. or likes to sleep in his own bed or is friendly with cats you know it's important those are, information those are important and until you look at it it's like oh god i didn't even think of putting that down you're yeah. writing the food the medications when they've had their shot when they're going to need to see the vet again, you know. Um, but these are these are little personal things for the yes. dogs and cats mm -hmm. that sometimes it like has to trigger the thought that in they head. like. Like my dogs won't eat watermelon. I don't know why. I wish they would. But you know, certain fruit a list of fruits, blueberries. Do they like blueberries? Do they like apple? Do that? You know, this would be a helpful if I were to get a pet that had been. You know, in a rescue, mm -hmm. I have two rescue dogs, but if I were to get another, I have three, so I'm not getting any more right now. But if I were to get another one, those are things that, that are, it gives you that sense of, I know who you are. Mm -hmm. It's not that much of a, you know, uh, 
wait and see type of thing. You know right from the bat that your dog likes to sleep on the bed or likes to, likes to have his own bed. You know, those are important things that will give you that sense of belonging already. Mm -hmm. You know, that making, it'll make it easier to make that animal part of your family. Well, and for, if you are a rescue, if you are a foster parent, if you are a, uh, a shelter, definitely go to suncoastpet.com. And for any of you who want to get the t I mean, I have the t-shirt, the totes. I have two t-shirts and totes and pillow. And I'm going to have to get a new one now because you have to think about the dog mama. So I'm going to have to get that now. <laughs> <Dog And mama. laughs> so uh, please go to suncoastpet.com. You're going to see all of this. Plus, you'll be able to see the articles that we talked about today and learn more about um, the pet suffocation that we talked about yes. earlier with Pat Harlan. So I mean, Bonnie Harlan. So I thank you so much, Candice. You always bring a lot. Your magazine always brings a lot to us. Thank you. And as always, it's a pleasure uh, working with you on the magazine. And uh, as Miss Olive knows, get the word out. That's what we have to do. And you're doing an awesome job, too. So thank I'm you. honored to be working with you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, everyone. And we will be back in just a moment. Begging to hear more of your favorite show? <laughs> Full episodes of all our shows are available on demand. Go to PetLifeRadio.com to fetch our entire lineup of possum pet podcasts. Also, dig us up in iHeartRadio and iTunes. Let's talk pets. <laughs> Live and on demand only from Pet Life Radio. We would like to thank our guests this week. And also, as our doggy divas always say... Please love your pets because they love you unconditionally. And please remember to adopt, foster, spay, neuter, and microchip. And as always, please have a great Diva Week, everyone. That's all for this episode of The Doggy Diva Show. To find out more, go to our website, thedoggydiva.com. Also, find us on our Facebook page, The Doggy Diva Show, and tell your fellow dog lovers about it. Don't miss Susan Marie, Miss Olive, and the Doggy Divas right here for the next episode. See you again soon. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.